All right, so if you're just now joining me, we are talking about how do you parent through your child's emotional whirlwind? How do you know what to say and what to do? One way you can think about this is think about um, decision making in terms of an emotional traffic signal. So if you think of emotional traffic signal, you've got red light, green light, and not blue light. I don't have, I don't have yellow, I'll do orange. Maybe that'll work. So here's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> we're gonna draw it out on this right here. Oh, got a little blurry there for a minute. All right, so red is at the top. And so if you have the emotional traffic signal, there we go, right there. So you're in red zone. This is like super not great. We'll put a sad face, maybe put an angry face. It's basically saying um, super overwhelmed, right? And then you're gonna have like, this is not super great. That's the, the next signal, imagine that's yellow. And then on the next one is green. So I'm gonna try to pop up another screen so I can see if you guys have any questions as I'm walking through um, the different emotional traffic signals. Let's see, click, 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 seeing if I can find it. <clears throat> All right, so when you're thinking about the emotional traffic signal, you know you're in red when you as a parent, you're overwhelmed. So being overwhelmed, um, so this right here is when your child's like overwhelmed and they could be um, demanding, out of control, maybe throwing a fit, yelling, screaming, throwing themselves on the ground, whatever that looks like, um, they're out of control. It doesn't have to look like aggression. It could be withdrawn. It could be that they're shutting down. They have hopelessness. Um, so if you're catching this, type in the comments, totally get that. I've seen that in my kid before. And red is now, red is whenever you too, as a parent, you're also overwhelmed. So maybe you're anxious, maybe you're feeling stressed, maybe you're arguing, yelling, maybe you took the bait for a power struggle, um, but you've kind of hit your max capacity and so has your child. That's when you're in the red zone. So if you're like totally been there, done that, then that happens to everybody. Every once in a while we might get into a red zone. So type in the comments, let me know you're watching and say, yes, I've seen that not only maybe in your own family, but even growing up. So that's what red is. This is where you're overwhelmed, out of control. And again, it doesn't have to be anger. It doesn't have to be sadness. It could be anxious. Um, maybe you're pleading and begging with your kid. Um, whatever that looks like, that's where your emotions are really high and intense and so is your child. So the danger zone here is for the parent to have an outburst. This is where we might say some things we regret. We like, maybe we say things like, get out of my face. I don't want to deal with you right now. Or maybe we start um, yelling. Maybe we like slam doors ourselves or whatever that looks like. We have our grown up version of a tantrum, right? So that's what that looks like on the red zone. That's the, that's the danger is parental explosion. The goal in the red is parental self-care. This is where you need to take care of you. In this one, we don't do um, traditional timeouts where a you know, kid goes into a corner or you send them away. This is like basketball strategy timeout. You don't have to send the kids away. You might, depends on the situation, but where you take a break because you're the one who needs self-care. Obviously they're also out of control, but you need to work on you first. So it could be that you part in love and you say, I am so sorry. Like I cannot um, talk about this right now. I need to take care of me and I love you. So we're going to talk about this later. And then you exit, you find a way to take a break from that situation. So that's what you're doing in the red. I mean, if your kid's throwing a fit in the middle of a parking lot of Target or wherever, you scoop up the kid and you move on, right? But for the most part, this is where you need to take a break and you have to have self-care. Now, if you are in the red zone, like multiple times a day, every single day, that means you need to get help for you um, because that means you have too much on your emotional plate and we haven't really portion control on life. And we have to work on taking care of our emotions because we've got too much going on. Too many things are weighing us down. And we're not doing really good um, soul care. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So this is where you get inner healing prayer ministry. You get counseling. You get mentorship. You, um, whatever you got to do to take care of you. Like you have to have more self-care. Now, when you're calm enough, that's how you get into the yellow. Even though I used orange, I don't have yellow. So when you're calm enough as a grown-up, that's when you're here in the next one. And so in this next zone, this is where kids still overwhelm, their emotions are really high, but you're for the most part pretty chill. So that's what's going on in this one. So now your child is whether they're demanding, um, they're out of control, they're whining, they're withdrawn, they are um, crying uncontrollably. Like it can look like a lot of different emotions, but it could be fear. Um, but the emotion, whatever it is, they're overwhelmed. They don't know how to take care of it. 
you know, sometimes we can look at our kids and think, well, you're just being spoiled or you just always have to have your way. Now, to some degree, they, they, there may be truth behind it, but a lot of times that feeling word is called disappointment and your child just doesn't know how to deal with the feeling called disappointment that they get out of control. And so the goal here, let me, let me back up, the, the um, danger zone here is um, a power struggle and we can take a bait for a power struggle. And we wanna be careful that we don't take the bait as the grown up, we, because otherwise we'll pop back up in the red, which is super non-productive. So we try to stay calm enough, you know, because it's not always going to be perfect. We have these mirror neurons in our brain where we reflect the emotions of the people that we're around. So it's, it's likely that you could pop up in here if you're not managing yourself really well. So in this zone, this is where you're going to be managing your emotions and you communicate with your kid long enough for understanding, but not necessarily not necessarily long enough for agreement because sometimes we try to convince our kids to agree with the rules that are in place. And that's not necessarily the goal. Of course, you want your kid to do that. But if you do that, then you end up arguing and it'll escalate and it maybe ends up in a blow up. And then everyone just feels super bad about it, you know, and it's still upset. And so the goal here is actually not to enforce consequences. Think about it. There may have been times where let's say your kids had sibling fighting and you force them to apologize and you're like, Say, say you're sorry, and the kid's like, I'm sorry. And you're like, say it like you mean it. And like, they don't really mean it because their heart's not in it, right? And so um, the key here is not consequences in the yellow zone. What you're doing here is the goal here is uh, emotional coping skills for the child. You're coming up as a grown up. That's how you got to yellow. But, um, but now the kid's still overwhelmed. So your goal is uh, coping skills. The problem is, as parents, we often skip this phase, which is why children don't have good coping skills because we're either blowing up in red or we're disciplining and having a lot of punishment um, or follow through right here, but we don't know what to do when it's game time. Like we can practice and say all the things, but when it's game time, when your kid's overwhelmed, we have a hard time conveying how they can work through those emotions. So you're communicating about the feeling. Now, kids don't always wanna talk about feelings. Like in the moment, they want what they want, whatever it is, like maybe they wanna get away Maybe they want space. Maybe they want to argue and prove their point. Maybe they want to be able to go to a friend's house and you're not letting them. Maybe they want to have um, an extra movie, you know, after bedtime, whatever it is, they may be giving you whatever kind of attitude, um, whatever that looks like, um, but don't communicate about what they're wanting necessarily. You want to first focus on like, okay, I hear what you're saying. You're saying you want this, but like, why do you have to say it like that? Why are you so upset? Like, what's going on right now? There's probably another way you can say this. So you're trying to help your child or teen, whatever, to calm down. That's what you're doing right here in yellow. But I'm going to caution you. This is um, a place where we often can get into a power struggle, you know, and if you're carrying resentment from previous arguments with your child, you're carrying some baggage into the next conversation or the next conflict. So we need to be super aware of that, that in between these conversations that we have with our kids, that we're having some really good self-care. So we're avoiding that and we're managing this really well. So you have a fresh slate for the most part, as best you can do, you know. <clears throat> and then when your child is calm enough, then you roll into green. And then in green, um, this is the moment when you don't, you focus on restoring the child. And if you need to give consequences, that's when you give consequences. It's a teachable moment. You don't have to lecture. The danger zone here is sometimes we're so frustrated by how it got out of control here or that it even got out of control that um, that we sometimes might have a little zinger in our conversations with our kids. We want to be careful of that and be aware of it. We want to make sure that we are um, not shaming our kids. We want to make sure that we are having a teachable moment but not making it a super long lecture. We're rubbing it in their face and they feel like horrible human beings afterwards, okay? But in this green, um, what you're doing is you're restoring their identity. You're giving them kudos for how they calm themselves down. You're giving them solutions. Like here's another way you can handle that problem next time instead of the way it did happen. And you're going to repeat this process over and over again. But this is the process of developing coping skills with your child. Like kids do not get coping skills any other way other than from learning it from you as the parent. And so it is out of relationships. Um, the conversations, the quality time that you have, like in that green zone, like that's how kids are able to return to a place of joy and capacity. And the more you put in the reps, the greater capacity your child has of returning to a place of joy. And joy is like, it's like, it's not necessarily happiness, but it's like contentment. It's a feeling like, like I'm worthy and valuable. I may not always feel great all the time, but like, it's okay, you know? And so you want your kid to be able to return to a place 
of feeling good about who they are and about life, um, regardless of circumstances, but they just like, okay, like we're re we have, we hit the reboot button. And so that's kind of what it looks like when you, when we talk about the emotional traffic signal, if you have questions about any of this, you can post it, let me know what your questions are. But as you're working through like your child's issues and things that they're going through, you want to be thinking about the emotional traffic signal and how can I get to a place of green with them and, um, and, and be patient through the process. So it could be a lot of self-care for you um, and being very intentional, creating margin in life. So let's talk about margin for a minute. Margin is basically like, if you have the um, a certain level of capacity, like, like we are capable of X, Y, Z energy resource, we're limited finite beings, but here's what we can do in our own strength. Now, um, we have margin is where am I actually functioning at? Here's my capacity and here's where I'm functioning. Now, if you're an overachiever parent, you think that you can actually do this, but realistically, maybe you could do like a little bit more than the regular person because you're extra like internally motivated and driven, but you still need to have margin. Margin is that gap, um, preferably below, like where you're functioning and your actual capacity. And when you're actually have a decent amount of margin, that means when stressful things happen, when your kids go through stuff, you're going through stuff, a friend is going through something, you have that ability to have a bounce back, to be able to, to give time and attention. But a lot of times we put too much on our plate as parents that when our kids are freaking out and they're having struggles, like right here, that we quickly get into red and we get non-productive and we can't, we don't have the capacity ourselves to give them the energy and resources that um, those people that we care about really need. So that's what I think about is like the emotional traffic signal. It is very hard to do sometimes, you know, like, cause you have to be super aware of what's happening in the moment. It, it requires a lot of self-monitoring because in order to go through the traffic signal, it doesn't move if you don't have good self-care. So as you're aware of yourself, it's going to be um, much easier. And I like to say this sometimes too, that like when you have stuff going on, your kids can trigger you and it may have nothing to do with you, but um, you can get triggered. And so you want to be aware of what's going on within you in the moment. And I like to say like shelf it, don't stuff it. Shelving it implies I'm going to come back around to this, but I can't deal with it right now. So I need to make myself available to my child who needs me because they don't know how to deal with disappointment, with offense, with whatever the emotional thing is. And so you shelf it. Stuffing implies I'm not going to come back around to this. I'm going to pretend I don't have issues, you know? So we want to make sure that we shelf it for the moment. We can be with our kids, be present, be available, um, and really be attentive to those things, helping them with coping skills. But then we come back around to it and we can't give what we don't have. So if we don't have the emotional capacity to help our kids restore themselves through things because we have a hard time ourselves, we're not going to be able to teach them. And so it's really important that we monitor self-care we're aware of where our kids are at. We um, don't skip that yellow zone where it's all about coping skills, like helping your kids calm down. Now, in that, in that yellow zone, there's gonna be a few things that you may do. If your child's emotions are extremely intense, really, really big, you may just use distraction. So there was a, a time in life where I was working at um, a shelter for as emergency uh, shelter for youth. And um, it was lockdown facility and um, kids couldn't just come and go where, wherever they wanted to, whenever they wanted to. Um, like if we had to go to the gym for like, you know, activity time, like we would go in groups, you know, like they couldn't just go out into the backyard kind of space. It was like lockdown because some of these kids might want to run away and they'd be, you know, in danger. And so one of the things I learned from that experience of working in that shelter where some of the kids came from difficult places and they would literally like try to plan to jump staff and things like that. Like they really came from difficult places. And one of the things I learned in training was the one thing that we have like, you know, um, going in as staff was this element of surprise. And I remember thinking, what does that mean? And there was one moment where this person, this kid was, you know, uh, I think it was a teenager, um, was overwhelmed and freaking out and everything. And here comes this program manager running in and she's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she just did something really random and strange. And the kids like, later like, what are you doing? And that's when they were able to go in and intervene. And so like, that's what they meant by element of surprise. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So in the yellow zone, if your kid, you might not be able to see that very good, but if you're, if your child, adolescent, whoever, their emotions are really, really, really extreme in that moment, um, that there's no talking, um, calming down or anything, you may just use distractions. Like, hey, you know what? I forgot something in the car. You want to go help me grab some stuff? And you're like, help, have them help 
pull something out or whatever, you know, like, hey, you know, let's go outside, let's go do this. Or you may just go er, left field, you know, like just a hard left turn. And it could be that you use a distraction momentarily just to kind of shift what's happening because the brain, they're stuck in the moment. They are completely stuck and um, they're not able to get out of that. And then once you get them out of that, then you can talk through the emotions and you're not doing teaching lessons yet. You're not talking about like what they need to do about the situation next time. You're like, you're literally helping them calm down and they may not want to because they may just be so overwhelmed. And so you don't have to ask their permission. You're just literally helping them. You're saying, you know what? There's some things over here. Let's go check this out over here. Let's just go for a walk. You know, so you don't have to talk about what triggered them necessarily, but you're going to be helping them to calm down. And once they get to a better place, then you can start doing their, their reasoning. Because what happens is when you think about the brain structures, the back of the brain um, develops first in the womb, and then it goes from the back to the front. And your brain is growing all the way even to like mid to late 20s. Some studies show even like the 30s, the late 30s, maybe. And so it's like growing for a long period of time. Of course, there's rapid growth, the first five years of child development. Then it goes through a whole lot of other changes through adolescence, through lots of milestones and whatnot. But the logical, rational part of the brain is going to be um, primarily that front part of the brain, which is still developing. That's why kids have a hard time with impulse control, with rationality and things like that. Maybe they have rational moments, but they're not like that all the time. That's why they forget stuff, you know, those, those kinds of things. And the back of the brain is like, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm cold. It's those basic functions regulating my heart. And so when you think about it for kids, like when they are activated, um, their emotions are overwhelmed. What happens is their brain basically gets hijacked by emotions. And what logical part of the brain they do have, they, it kind of cuts off access. The more intense the emotion, the harder it is to retrieve those logical, rational faculties of our brain, which is true for adults as well. So, um, so you kind of it kind of shuts down. So if you're trying to be rational, logical with a kid whose emotions are intense, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to get really triggered yourself. And so the key isn't to be rational to someone who's irrational. The key is to help them regulate their emotions. You know, that's what you're focusing on. And then once they're calm, then you're able to actually work on developing some other parts of the brain, like the rational stuff, like, hey, next time when you're feeling this way, let's try this. Let's at least agree to this, or um, let's practice this. So maybe you're practicing how to handle those situations um, the next time it may happen. So you want to go through and kind of restore, like, and have those teachable moments. Restore, like, here's what we should do instead. So when we break away from what we need to be doing, here's what we ought to be doing. And you practice that. And once they're practicing it, you're putting it into another part, another vault in the brain that they can still access. So um, for simplistically put, um, there are some parts of the brain we don't access really well um, when we're stressed out, but there are some places we can like, so music, songs, you know, those kinds of things, those are going to be embedded the same places where they can access even when they're overwhelmed. I'm not saying sing to your kid necessarily whenever they're stressed out, but, um, but it, maybe you do, or maybe you have like some kind of song, maybe you do something like, Hey, let's agree that whenever we're really overwhelmed, let's just take a break, you know, like a basketball strategy timeout, take a break, regroup, get a new game pl plan. So during that time, like, let's just play some music. Maybe, maybe that's what you do, you know, or you, you just change up the pattern. So that way they, um, they're, they're shifting their brain and not having that stuckness in the moment. So if this has helped you out, let me know. This is a, a great way that I think through, like, how do I decide as a parent, what do I say and what do I do when my kids are really overwhelmed and how can I respond in such a way that actually builds their emotional capacity? So as you think through the red, the yellow, and the green light, discover where do you tend to get stuck? And based on this uh, lesson, like, how can you intervene um, moving forward? So I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, let me know, like, what does this look like in your household? What are some areas you feel like you have a strength in that? Like it's a resource for you. And what are some areas like, okay, I, I can see where I can grow a little bit more and do X, Y, Z. So you guys have an amazing afternoon and I'll check in with you later. Bye.